Hi, I'm Robert Kinsel, VP of Content at Google and a Global Head of Content for YouTube. You are the guy behind this 100-channel uh, YouTube initiative, sort of a, a rethinking of what Google is and what Google will be. I'm not the guy. There are a lot of other people. You're, you're the there, guy there out there. There are do many other people involved in the entire effort. I, I enjoy your, fa your false modesty. But, but you, it, it's, it's, it's a fundamental change in, in what YouTube has been presenting for a long time. YouTube has, is, has 800 million users. Uh, it's the second biggest search engine in the world. YouTube is incredibly popular, right, doing what it already does. Why do you guys want to rethink this and change it? I don't necessarily think that it's a, a radical change or a rethink. We're just adding options. Uh, what we've done is we've essentially realized that a lot of our content providers are already setting up channels on YouTube as a way to interactive, interact with us, with YouTube, but not necessarily with the viewers. There are some who figured it out that way, but we didn't necessarily make it as easy for them as possible. So YouTube was kind of in the way. So what we've done this year was not only focus on a lot of content, but also focus on the organizing principle of YouTube, which allow for YouTube to get out of the way and essentially let our channel partners interact with viewers in the channel, which is how their relationship with us was already set up. So YouTube is kind of getting out of the way and becoming more and more of a platform for other brands to be built. But you're describing that in a sort of mechanical way and then the thrust here is to go get what we now call premium content, stuff by people you've heard of or people you haven't heard of but are in the business of making video full time and saying, please come make your stuff, show it here, um, advertisers will like it more. Um, so it's not just a matter of you tweaking some stuff and you've gone out and spent money to encourage them to do that. So but again, what was wrong with, with the old way and that seemed to work pretty well? Um, absolutely, it has worked very well and 800 million users worldwide would agree to the tune of 3 billion hours per Right. Uh, per month, but um, we've simply completed the picture by making sure that we have all creators, all types of creators on our platform, and there are a lot of creators who might not have had the faith in online video in general, so it was not a statement about YouTube, but it was just about online video. Um, they were busy creating projects for theaters, TVs, etc. So what we made sure is that they knew what we were up to that they knew our vision, and that they knew what we thought about the nexus of um, internet-connected devices, bandwidth, and just embracing of online video by the viewers. And when they all sort of thought about it, they agreed and they said, it's time for us to join. It doesn't mean that we reject the past. We obviously work and continue to work with the industry that we grew up in, but they've joined a lot of the great creators that we already had, and roughly half of the viewer, half of the deals that we've done over the last year have gone to people who have been existing partners on YouTube and the other half has gone to new partners. And of those, a tremendous amount of them have partnered with the existing partners to help market the channels and so on, reach the right audience. So it was truly uh, sort of a joint effort of the existing uh, YouTube community as well as some of those who have not created for us in the past. So it's putting it all on steroids, essentially. The, the numbers are a little fuzzy about what you're spending. Sometimes it's 100 million, sometimes it's 100 channels, and you're giving them 5 million each. But w whatever it is, it's, it sounds like a lot. And then in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's not very much at all. 100 million bucks can't make you a traditional movie. Uh, if you guys are serious about this, why not spend more? Why not give the creators more? Why not sure. give, bring in more creators? Why not make a bigger bet? Uh, today, we spend a lot of money on content already through our revenue share agreements with a lot of different partners. Uh, there's different ways that, that, that we spend, but this one was the most visible one. There's many other ways that we spend money. However, uh, what is really important is to ride along the adoption curve and the monetization curve of video. If you go too fast, you burn too many resources too soon and you burn out. If you run too slow, other people um, gain the customer that you may like to have. So what we're trying to do is read the market, both the advertiser market as well as the viewership, and we have that on both, and essentially ride somewhere along that adoption curve. And so long as our growth rates continue where they are, and we are you know, within 20% margin of that adoption curve, mm -hmm. we feel great about it. So we feel we started with the right number, and we'll just... Uh, we'll, so as, we'll as usage goes up, as people spend more time, you'll spend more money, and as advertising ramps up, you'll be able it's, to spend more money. It's this incredible flywheel yep. of, of all of those things together, and it's really just up to us to monitor all the trends and make, make sure that we're instantly responsive to any trend that's out there, 
and then we can propel it. And again, you don't want to be too far ahead of the adoption curve or too far behind. It's hard to be precise, but we can get pretty, you know, quite precise about things. Just had a pause there. I'm not, I'm not an expert editor, so there might be a jerk in, in here besides the one holding the camera. Uh, you came from Netflix. At Netflix, uh, you brought content uh, to the streaming service. That was your main job. You wrote a lot of big checks. People thought you'd do that again this time around. You haven't. Uh, you haven't gone out to NBC or the studios and given them a ton of money in exchange for content. But you guys could afford that, so, so why not? Well, just because you can afford something, it doesn't mean that's what you should do. Um, but we have wonderful relationships with all of those folks that you mentioned, uh, whether it's on the marketing side on, or even on the, on the um, content side. Um, the way we see YouTube is different from the way Netflix or Hulu are being positioned in the marketplace. They acquire individual and discrete programming, which they put under their brand, and they spend a lot of money marketing their brand, making sure that consumers know exactly what they stand for. But it's all about their brand and that uh, narrow set of programming that they're precisely focused on. Netflix means movies and older TV shows. Hulu means mostly catch-up TV. Yep. That's roughly along those lines. I know there's a lot of other content on both uh, services, but that's roughly what it means to the consumers. YouTube's content is way too diverse to be narrowed down in any of those buckets. So we chose to organize ourselves more as a platform that distributes other people's brands. And then those brands can be narrow and those brands can have the programming that people that is dear, dear to people's heart. So they may not come to YouTube to watch all of YouTube's content. They may come to YouTube to watch Machinima because they care about the gamer uh, audience and, and, and the gamer programming. Or they go and watch the uh, beauty videos from Michelle Fan and her channel. But the people who are watching your channels now, they're watching TV as well. They're watching yes. a lot more TV than they're yep. watching video, mm -hmm. uh, most of them. Yep. So clearly there's, there are eyeballs there that you sure. can bring and theoretically you could do interesting things with them. It, it seems like ignoring them or not trying to attract them doesn't make yeah. sense. We're not ignoring them. What was important for us to set up the operating principle and the, um, and the guiding principle for uh, users on YouTube, and we still have ways to go on that. We're still uh, filtering all of those changes to our device uh, implementations, etc. But it's imp very important for us to set up the, the guiding principles and to set up our content relationships in that way. And when you do all of those, then you can start looking at depth of programming, length of programming, all of those. So all of those are activities that we'll be looking at very seriously in the coming months and years. So uh, we didn't want to run too fast in, in certain things. We just wanted to you know, put in the right building blocks, and I believe that's exactly what's happening. So you're today. not done. There's more to come. Mm -hmm. uh, we are only starting. You've got 100 channels that you've announced. Uh, what's the one you think you'll watch most often? Uh, the Nerdist. The Nerdist, done. Channel for Nerds. Good endorsement. Everybody check Harvard. it out. It's wonderful. Thanks, Robert. Take care. All right. Thanks, Peter.